Hi guys, so let's now take a look at the production function. Now the production function is really about the generation of output or productivity, uh, which is a function of the factor inputs. And we'll look at this relationship in this little table that I've drawn out, and we'll be considering labor and capital as our factor inputs here. Uh, so it illustrates the relationship between the maximum output attainable and the quantities of all inputs used. So let's take a look at what we've got here. So we can see that I've, um, I've put down labor going through one to five here. Uh, now, meanwhile, we've got these different plants or different factories uh, and the corresponding output levels that are possible within each plant, given the actual capital inputs that are also used within each of those factories or plants, as we can actually see that. So what's interesting here is this the... Uh, typical productivity that we've been working uh, through in the last few lessons where one labourer will produce four units of output, two, ten, so we see that increasing marginal return and then of course we experience diminishing marginal returns uh, to labour where uh, additional labourers uh, correspondingly have lower and lower output levels generated. Now what's really interesting uh, through this table is uh, we see this uh, right across, so we go from 10 to 15, uh, then, so that's a marginal productivity, of course, of uh, 5, and then we only go up by 3, so once again we see diminishing marginal returns. Uh, here we see 13 to 18, so 5, and then down to 4. Uh, here we've got six and then down to three. So we do see those uh, diminishing marginal returns within each of these. Now also, if we actually consider our capital goods, the machinery utilized here, what's also interesting is we see that initially, as we employ just one laborer and then we have two capital goods used, two machines used, we see those increasing marginal returns. Uh, but then they diminish thereafter once again. And we see this throughout. So 10 to 15, 5, uh, 15 to 18, well, that's down to 3. Once again, we've got 5 here, down to 4. Uh, once again, 5, down to 4. So we can see those diminishing marginal returns, uh, not just to labour uh, as we go vertically down, but we can see horizontally, we also see... Uh, the diminishing marginal returns to capital to that machinery utilised here. Uh, now, the production function itself really, therefore we could actually just express a nice simple equation which would be that the quantity of the output or output equals labour and capital that is actually utilised. So within this example we'd be able to say, right, one labour and one capital good will equal an output of four, of course. Uh, so if we uh, increase our labor and our capital goods uh, so that we use two labor and two capital, well, our output Q would be 15. So the production function really expresses this relationship quite nicely. Uh, so let's just have a look at how this uh, actually looks with regard to each of uh, these different plants in operation that we see here. So with our first example, let's just draw that one through. We go from 4 to 10 to 13, 15, 16. So let's just put that one through and we can see something uh, like that for plant one there, okay? Uh, so initially, initially we see quite a decent return to that, uh, that labor input, but of course that labor input, so we continue to increase the labor force, we see that marginal return setting in in our production function. So if we now move site, let's uh, just pick that pen up, um, and let's have a look at plant number two. So we're going from 10 to 15 to 18 to 20 to 21. Okay, let's put that one through and we can therefore see with plant two, once again, we see initially those increasing returns to scale uh, and then the diminishing returns really setting in. Okay, so uh, of course we see a big increase once the first labourer is um, actually recruited, but here we see a marginal product of five and then it's down to three. So we see five as the uh, actual, uh, as helping to represent this gradient here in terms of the output and the increase in the labour. 
but of course that does begin to slow down and the output generated slows quite considerably as we progress through this. And once again we'll see this with regard to plant number three and of course with plant number four. So initially this is uh, useful for helping us to really understand uh, the likely shape of a production function and therefore in helping us to understand firstly the increasing returns to scale that actually occur as more labour or more capital is utilised going back to the capital from 10 to four, uh, 15 well that's 5 okay and thereafter it's 15 to 18 so that's diminishing marginal returns so we see that increasing returns initially before the diminishing marginal return set in so this is really useful to bear in mind guys I hope that's been useful thanks ever so much